Well, hello, everybody. Howdy. <laughs> hey, Gail. Yes. How are you doing today? Actually, I'm doing pretty good considering. Yes? Yes. Uh, by the way, hello, everybody. My name is Gail. And this podcast is called? In a Senior Moment. Yes. So you can look that up at any time. On YouTube. And you will see me <laughs> and Monty. Yes. And we today we're going to be discussing about my recent heart surgery that I had. Actually, it was to replace the valve in my heart. Now, there's two sections to the heart. One is has the arterial uh, valve, and the other side has the mitral valve. Yeah. Mine was the arterial valve. Yeah. I think I'm pronouncing that right, but you all know who I'm talking about <laughs> or what I'm talking about anyway. So. Um, back when I was a child, I think I was, anyway, um, I had rheumatic fever and as a result I had a heart murmur. Throughout the years, I really didn't pay a whole lot of attention to it because it didn't seem to interfere with anything that I wanted to do, ex exercise or whatever. Of course, I couldn't run the first mile. That's something I could never do, but that's okay. It didn't matter. So anyway. I uh, like that I have asthma and I can't run. Or, or, really? Yeah. So asthma kills me like that. It, gets, it kills my energy. Yeah. I'm up and loud and I can do things, but I can't overexert myself. I can understand that. So, yeah. I know other people have had it. Yeah. But, and it's not something you get over either. No. And neither was this valve thing. Anyway, so they told me here a few, uh, a few weeks ago that it was getting to the time where I had to replace it. Now, I remember a friend of mine that had it done a few years ago, and it was, it was less than 10 years ago. Yeah. And she had her valve replaced. And in doing so, she never came home because she died. Wow. And that was very upsetting to me because she was one of my best friends. Yeah. And I thought, wow, I'm glad I don't have that problem. Well, little did I know I did have that problem. <laughs> so anyway, um, I was scared to death. I thought, my God, am I going to be cut open? And they're going to replace the valve and gee, I might die on the table. So when I got to the doctors, believe me, I wanted him to know how I felt and why I felt that way. So he explained to me that procedure was no longer used. Oh yeah. That the new procedure that they're going to use on me is non-invasive as far as cutting me open. I went, wow, that's different. Yeah. And they said they were going to go through my major arteries to the heart. I went. Really? So, how do you get there? <laughs> I'm thinking to myself. I'm thinking all kinds of weird thoughts. You yeah. Know? Uh, well, you do. As a patient, I mean, you're going to be going through something you've never been through before. So, consequently, I went, uh, okay. I said, so how do we do that? They said they go through the growing. I'm going, growing? Oh, really? <laughs> oh, my. What if, you, what if you put on a few pounds and then they still go past all that? <laughs> No, it doesn't seem to matter. <laughs> so anyway, they told me about the procedure and uh, they go through the arteries, uh, veins, whatever you want to call them, and they go up to the heart and they take the valve, it goes into the, the vein and they put it up into the heart. And what happens, that valve is placed and it pushes the old valve back out of the way and the new valve is put in place of it. Yeah. And they take and one procedure is to test for the catheterization and it's a pretest to the operation, which I did not know you needed to have, but I understand it now because <laughs> they didn't do that, they wouldn't know where anything was. So thank God yeah. for that. Anyway, so they go in and they test and put a uh what do they call it? They, they, they put a, a scope down your throat. 
and I'm thinking to myself, oh, I gag very easily. <laughs> oh my God, how am I going to do that? So anyway, they explained to me that they put you on the table and they uh, put you into a twilight zone. I thought, twilight zone? And I said, am I going to be conscious of what's going on? And the doctor looks at me and he says, well, sort of. I thought, oh dear, I don't like this at all. And I said, what do you mean, sort of? And he says, actually, you're in like a light slumber so that we can talk to you and tell you to swallow the scope. I'm going, swallow the scope? Oh dear, okay. And I said, am I going to remember any of that? And he said, probably not. Yeah. Well, the word, the operative word was probably <laughs> not. And I'm focusing on that word. <laughs> but anyway, when it came time to do it, I laid there and all these thoughts are going through my head and I'm thinking to myself, dear Lord, please, I don't want to remember any of this at all. <laughs> well, we're, we're glad everything worked out, but what questions would he have asked you that you can answer? So you got a, a pipe in your throat and they're going through the groins, <clears throat> but it got you half knocked out. So well, what would he asked you if you had if he was any complications? I didn't Don't have know. any complications. For one thing, this was a test to see if my veins, if I needed any stents put yeah. in because of blockages. But I didn't have any at all. And at, at my seven. age, I'm, I'm, I'm 83. Oh, I hate saying that. <laughs> but um, at my age, I didn't have any blockages at all. Yeah. And at 83, that's a rarity in today's world. Yes. Anyway, so... Um, they went ahead, they didn't have any problem. It took less than an hour to do the operation. But getting back to the test, once I woke up from everything, they told me that everything tested out great. There'd be no problem doing the operation. And I had, a, I think, a couple weeks or something before I did the operation. So I felt a lot better. I felt like, I think I can survive this. <laughs> so. How long were you in the hospital? Actually, they put me in there overnight. Overnight. And they had me do it. I, I went in that early, uh, ungodly hour, about 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And they started at 7 doing it. And I was done before 8 o'clock. Really? Yeah. It didn't take any time at all. Well, they didn't have any blockages yeah. to to put stents in or anything like that, so they didn't have any problems. And they put me back in my room, and I could not, no, not in my room, they put me into a recovery room. Yeah. I had to lay there for eight long, tedious hours on my back. <laughs> that was the hardest part of the whole thing. Fortunately, I had family there to help me yeah. while away the hours, so to speak. So that helped some, but dear Lord, it was quite an ordeal. And it just went through as a breeze. And I think a lot of it stemmed from the fact that I know I didn't have any problems because I didn't have any stents put in. Uh, I didn't have any health issues. Yeah. Uh, I do have one health issue that hasn't gone away and I doubt it ever will, but it's uh, a red, blood cell disease and it's a precursor possibly to leukemia. Oh really? Yes, it's quite serious. Yeah. Anyway, this was developed. I don't know how it happened. It's very rare, I'm told, because I'd never heard of it before. Don't ask me what it's called because I don't remember and it's not that important really. But anyway, um, so I have to go to the hospital every month and have a shot to help boost my red blood cells yeah. because they're either damaged or they are underdeveloped. And in your large bones is where the red blood cells are developed that help your body breathe. Yeah. And that sends oxygen throughout your whole body. And you know it only takes about 45 seconds for the blood to go throughout your entire body. Really? Can you believe that? <laughs> 45 seconds. Zoom, zoom. It's all through it. 
learn something new every day. <laughs> really? I thought that was quite interesting, actually, yeah. when you think about it. 45 seconds. In other words, when you sit here, your bloodstream is been racing through your body <laughs> like crazy. Anyway, so um, after laying there for eight hours, I was allowed to get up and come home. You was home the next day, right? Yeah, I came home the next day, which I thought was, wow, this is good. I like this. Yeah. And uh, my family brought me home, and they stayed with me for two or three days, mainly to feed me because I really didn't feel like I was hungry. Yeah. It was weird, but I didn't feel it. So anyway, that was good. So when they went in, they went to the arterial valve because that was the side that I had the problem with. And when they pushed back the old valve, they yeah. pushed it out of the way. They showed me a little round circle that had a, a valve or an opening in it. And it was made from cow. Really? It was a cow valve. They used to be pigs, but now they're cows. But they found out that, and the best part of the whole thing is, there's nothing that you have to do after the operation with a cow valve. You don't have to have special medication. You don't have to have any procedure. You don't have to worry about any medicine to yeah. take. It's like nothing ever happened. <laughs> Except now I can feel that my heartbeat is a lot sounder than what it was. Yeah. And I don't get as hired as I did before. So it does make a, a difference. And I feel much better. I don't think I'll be running any races, but. Do you feel yourself wanting grass on a regular basis? Really? Are you even mooing at people? <laughs> well, I don't know about that. But <laughs> anyway, so there was, like I said, a few days uh, difference. Now, this, they have an echocardiogram that they also give you as well as the left heart catheterization. And it's a transesophageal echocardiogram. That's a mouthful to yeah, say. Yeah, it is. And actually what it does, it helps your doctor to look into your heart to see what they're gonna have to do for the procedure. Now, this is all pre-done before the actual procedure. And it took longer to do that than it did to do the procedure, because the procedure took less than an hour yeah. to do. And then, uh, anyway, so, now, one thing I want to say is no matter what road that we take, we all end up in the same place. Think about it. <laughs> Gives you something to think about. Yeah. Anyway, so, um, I'd like to talk somewhat about um, this this procedure that I went up for years that I had this problem, this heart murmur. It's something that you don't really uh, acknowledge because it's something that's going on inside your body. But I can tell you one thing: there are certain signs that tells you that you do have a problem. What were the signs? Uh, the lack of energy. I never could really be totally active as an athlete. Yeah. I always had to be aware of the fact that I had a heart murmur. And any time I went to the doctors, that's the first thing they would say to me. Oh, you have a heart murmur. Well, congratulations. <laughs> I could have told you that. But uh, anyway, it's, it's amazing in today's world what they can do. Because I remember seeing people having these procedures where they crack open the ribs. Yeah, yeah. And they go in and tend to the heart or whatever. And I always thought that that was really something. And Not a big scar down the middle. Yes, I know. And I thought, oh dear, I'll have to wear everything up <laughs> here. <laughs> but I didn't have to do that. <laughs> and I thought it was quite, it's quite remarkable when you think about it because... There's no visible scar yeah. at all. And as long as you don't run around naked. <laughs> well, not even when you're naked, there's no you, scar. When we through the groom, you, there's no scar? No, there's really? no scar. No scar there at all. I'm still amazed right now. <laughs> well, see, the thing is, when they go through the groin, 
I don't know what the tools are that they use because I wasn't awake to see yeah. what they were going to do. But I can only assume that what they have, if they have a little scope that went in on one side, they hit both sides. And I want to tell you, it's not a pretty sight after. Huh? Because you are so black and blue down there that that whole area of the growing is all black and blue. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about being colorful. <laughs> Whether you want to be or not. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it's quite unique because that was the only visible sign of my operation. Yeah. Was the black and blue. And that didn't last but a few days to a week. Yeah. Some a little bit after. But uh, I had no cramping. I didn't have any visible sign of pain. Yeah. There was no pain. It was all just going through there and no pain in my heart area. Nothing to say that I'd had an operation. I felt like maybe they didn't do anything, <laughs> but I know they, they did. They put you to sleep just to wake you back up. <laughs> all right, all done. <laughs> yeah, okay, all done, next. <laughs> but anyway, it, it was quite a unique experience, so I wanted to share that with everybody yeah. and let them know that it's a great procedure. If you have to have it done, there is no fear because I did it unnecessarily, but I was going by what was going on before me. And you did your research. Yes. Because you didn't want just any doctor. You went, hey, you had to talk to a doctor, make sure this is the one I want you to do it. Yes. And that's and very smart. You and interview, you interview your doctor. Yeah. And you come up with questions for him. Anything that concerns you, I don't care what it is. If it sounds outrageous, who cares? <laughs> because it's your body that you're dealing with, yeah. and it's your body that's going to react to it. But I'm telling you right now, this procedure is a dream to go through. Now, even when you have to have stents put in, that's done in the procedure prior to the operation. It's when they do all the testing that they will do that and take care of any little artery or vein problems prior to the operation yeah. so they don't have any problem during the operation at all it's really quite unique i think i don't know the procedure for putting stents in because i didn't have any we're not doctors <laughs> thank god yeah but uh no i was quite amazed absolutely amazed when you think about it in this day and age they can do so much for somebody and I want to be able to relate to people through the patient's eyes yeah because every time that you see stuff it's through the doctor or the procedure or anything like that I want people to understand there are some fears that you have but it's through lack of knowledge yeah. than anything else and I think that's something that people once they understand that they will want to know more about what's going on. And uh, ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. I hate seeing people, and I have friends that do that. They'll walk into a doctor's office, and the doctor will say, well, what is wrong today? And they'll go, well, you know, my heart is not... I'm told it's not pumping right. But they don't ask any questions. They just sit there like a bump on a log. Like, okay. Uh, yeah, I would definitely have questions. Well, even if you have questions, go ask. Yeah. I can't understand why people will walk into a doctor's office and like, okay, heal me. I'm here. <laughs> What's wrong? I don't know. And they, uh, they expect you to, the doctors to have the answer, so they can't until you tell them. Now, one thing I do want to reassure people to do. If you are supposed to take a medication that has side effects that are worse than what you're taking it for, tell the doctor no, no <laughs> because there's got to be something else that you can take yeah. that's going to be less invasive and reactive on the body. But people don't bother to find out what the side effects are. 
They have them on TV. Yeah. It's listed right there for you to see. <laughs> and there must be a blind spot because you go, what are the side effects? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. And I'm going, why don't you know? Uh, the doctor gave it to me, so it must be okay. I'm going, now how stupid is that? It is not okay. Yes, yes, it's, indeed. It's definitely something that you need to pay attention to is the side effects. The medication is there for you, and it can help you. But if it's going, to, if you have a side effect of death, which some of them are, and you take the medication for, say, a cold, or the flu, or this new thing, or COVID. Yeah. And one of the side effects is death. For God's sake, You're gonna ask more don't questions. take it. <laughs> See if there's something else that you can take that's close or less invasive for the body. You only have one body. Yeah. And if you destroy it, you're sunk. <laughs> you can't do anything else. And also, you have a very good diet, right? Oh, we'll go through that next time. Next time? Okay. Because there's definitely things that you should eat and not eat. Anybody who sticks to some of the diets that I have seen with friends of mine, I sit there and I'm like, wow, I can't believe you're actually poisoning your own body. Yeah. Because most all the foods that you eat today are prepared for you. And most of them have... Uh, ingredients in them that are not digested by the body and by the way anything that the body can't digest is stored in fat remember that yeah so if you eat prefab food you can pretty much count on all that stuff being stuck in your cells you and go. you'll never get rid of it unless you change your diet that's the only way to do now I will go through all that next time or another episode. There another episode. So anyway. We're done with this episode. How did you enjoy it so far? I think this turned out good. <laughs> At least I hope so. <laughs> Great. <laughs> you want to say goodbye to anybody or hello to anybody? Well, I'll tell you what. Pay attention to the next episode. God bless my family. Yes. I love them very much. God bless your heart. And definitely God bless your heart. <laughs> because you only have one and if you don't take care of it, it's going to rebel on you. And believe me, it's not going to be a pretty sight, ever. Yes, indeed. Now, you guys take care, and I will see you in my next episode. Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye. <laughs>